Okay, so this is lesson 3-4, which is dividing polynomials. Our essential question is how can you divide polynomials? So example one says, how can you use long division to divide p of x by d of x? Write the polynomial p of x in terms of the quotient and the remainder. So long division of polynomials is very similar to long division with just regular numbers. So we're going to review what we would do here. So, um, so the p of x is my dividend. It's going to go underneath. And just a note, as you are writing this out, if you're missing a power of x, so you'll notice I have x cubed, x squared, x, and then my constant. If I was missing one of those, I would need to leave a 0x as a placeholder, okay, or a 0x squared or something like that. So that what I just wrote is the dividend. My divisor is x plus 3. So the first question you're going to ask yourself is you're going to say, okay, x times what gives me x cubed? So that would be x squared. So I'm going to write it up here. You'll notice I'm going to line up each term with the correct place value. So x squared goes above the 5x squared because they have the same power of x. Now you take the number that you're the term that you put up above and you're going to multiply it by the divisor. So this would be x squared times x gives me x cubed, and x squared times 3 gives me 3x squared. Then my next step is to subtract. So the x cubes cancel. 5x squared minus 3x squared is 2x squared, and then I bring down the plus 6x. Now I say x, so again I'm looking right here, x goes into 2x squared, how many times? 2x, so I'm gonna add plus 2x, then I'm gonna multiply 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x times three is 6x. We're gonna subtract, and we get zero. They both cancel, so then we just bring down the nine. Well, x cannot go into nine, so therefore that means that nine is our remainder, and the way that we write this is, so we have x squared plus 2x, and then we write nine, over our divisor, which is x plus 3. So this whole answer up here is our quotient, so the, the answer to our division problem. So again, dividend is the part that goes underneath, divisor is the part out here, remainder is our whatever we have left over, and then this is the quotient. Okay, so here's another example. So this one, p of x is 8x cubed plus 27, and d of x is 2x plus 3. So you'll notice on this one, when I go to write the dividend, I have 8x cubed. I'm missing an x squared, so I'm going to put 0x squared. I'm missing an x, so I write 0x, and then I write 27. So this is an example of where I was missing terms, so you need to put 0 in there as a placeholder. Okay, and then my divisor is 2x plus 3. Okay, so we say 2x times what gives me 8x cubed, and that would be 4x squared. So I line it up with the x squareds, then I multiply. I get 8x cubed, 4x squared times 3 is 12x squared. Then I subtract, and I get negative 12x squared. I bring down the 0x. 2x times what gives me negative 12x squared? That would be minus 6x. Then I multiply. I get negative 12x squared. Negative 6 times 3 would be minus, oops, minus 18x. Subtract. That becomes positive 18x. I bring down the plus 27. 2x times what gives me 18x? That would be 9 9 times 2 is 18x, 9 times 3 is 27, and when we subtract, we get 0. So this one doesn't have a remainder, so this, and we'll talk about what that means um, in a couple examples here, but um, so that one does not have a remainder, so my answer, my quotient, would just be 4x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay, example 2 is now using a different type of division. It is using synthetic division. 
So the previous two examples we did, we actually could have used synthetic division. So you're not able to use synthetic division if you have a divisor, so like this part right here, that is a higher power than a linear function. So if it's a linear function that you're dividing by, you can use synthetic division. But if it's squared or cubed, you would need to use long division. So a lot of people say, well, once I show you synthetic division, you're going to say, this is so much easier than long division. And so the answer to when, when you can use each one is dependent on what the divisor is. Okay, so how we set up synthetic division is we're going to put numbers on the inside that correspond to the coefficients of your dividend. So we're going to write 2, negative 7. Notice I'm missing an x term, so I'm going to put 0 and then negative four. So those represent the coefficients of my dividend right here, okay? Now this is my divisor, and that's going to tell me what number, what k value I'm going to put on the outside of this. So this is x minus k, so our k in this case is three, so we're gonna put a three. The other way to think of the number out here is what makes the divisor equals zero. So it's kind of like a factor. So you're saying x minus three, what makes that equal zero? Just plain positive three. Okay, so now how you do synthetic division is you're going to add straight down. So on the two, we're gonna just drop the two straight down. And then you're gonna multiply by the k value. So two times three is six. And I'm gonna put that number right here. Now I'm gonna add straight down. So negative seven plus six is negative one. Now I'm gonna multiply by the k value. So negative one times three is negative three. I'm gonna write it right there. Then I'm gonna add down. So this would be negative three. Then negative three times three is negative nine. And then negative four plus negative nine is negative 13. And when you get to that last number, I always like to put a box around it because that represents our remainder. So it always helps me separate that final number from the rest of the equation. So if you have a cubic like this and you're taking, you're dividing by a power of x, that means your answer is going to be a quadratic. So this would turn into 2x squared minus x minus 3 plus negative 13 over x minus 3. So that would be my final answer. Okay. So example three is talking about the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem says that if you do synthetic division and the remainder you get is going to be the same as if you plug that value into the equation. So if we have f of x equals this big function right here and we're dividing by x plus two. So if I use synthetic division, I'm gonna say one, eight, 12, five, and my k value would be negative two. Okay, oops. So then I'm gonna drop the one down. One times negative two is negative two. Eight plus negative two is six. Six times negative two is negative 12. That would be zero. Zero times negative two is zero. So five is my remainder, okay? So now what, this, what the remainder theorem says is if I do f of negative two, so that would be negative two cubed plus eight times negative two squared plus 12 times negative two plus five. If I put that into a calculator and evaluate that out, five as my answer. So you'll notice that these two numbers are the same and that is what the remainder theorem says. So you can use synthetic division to evaluate at a function um, and it's gonna give you the same value out. Okay, this final example is using the remainder theorem, or not the remainder theorem, the factor theorem, which tells us that if there is a remainder of zero, then the divisor is a factor of the dividend. So we can use synthetic division or um, long division, and if you have a remainder of zero, then you know it is a factor. So we're gonna do these two. So this would be one, negative eight, 16, negative 23, negative 6. Our k value would be positive 6. So this would be 1, 6, negative 2, negative 12, 4, 
24, 1, positive 6. So this remainder is 0, so we would say yes, um, x minus 6 is a factor. Okay, then we come down here to this one. We have 1, negative 5, 9, negative 1, 3. Our k value would be negative 3. This would be 1, negative 3, negative 8, 24. Oh, you know what? I messed up. <laughs> it's like, what's going on here? So I messed up because I forgot to put in a zero term for x to the fourth. So we have a 1, we have 0, then we have negative 5, 9, negative 1, and 3. So be careful with that. See, I missed it, so make sure you don't. <laughs> okay, so this would be negative 3, this would be 9, so that would be 4, negative 12, negative 3, 9, so 8 negative 24, so our remainder would be negative 21, which means no, it's not a factor. So x plus 3 is not a factor of that polynomial. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in this lesson, so let me know if you need any more examples as you're working through the assignment. Thanks.